Today we will study the Word of God under the subject, The Passover is the truth that saves life. Let us share God's grace with this subject. When God gives mankind His commandments, there must be a reason and a purpose. Why did God give us His commands and let us keep them? Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 11. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God failing to observe His commands, His laws and His decrees that I am giving you this day. This means that we must observe God's commands, laws and decrees, right? Let's see verse 12. Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build fine houses and settle down, and when your herds and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud, and you will forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. He led you through the vast and dreadful desert, that thirsty and waterless land, with its venomous snakes and scorpions. He brought you water out of hard rock. He gave you manna to eat in the desert, something your fathers had never known, to humble and to test you, so that in the end, it might do what? It might go well with you. The reason God gives people His laws and decrees and lets us observe them is that in the end, it may go well with us. In other words, He wants us to be blessed. Today, the reason you've come to keep the Sabbath day is also to receive blessings. When we keep God's commands, such as the Passover, without adding to or subtracting from God's words, we can receive the blessings God has promised us. Let's look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. In other words, God will give blessings even to a thousand generations. God wants to bless those who keep His commandments. This is the will behind God's commands. That is why all our Zion members come before God on this Sabbath day to worship God and ask for His blessings. However, as you see the situations of many countries around us, they are not in this blessing. How pitiful it is! As you know well, the coronavirus is serious in China. It is reported on the news that 1,500 people are already dead, 65,000 people have tested positive, and about 2,000 of them are in critical condition. Hearing this news every day, I cannot help but think, why did God grant us the truth of the Passover in this age? Isaiah chapter 46 says, that God knows the end from the beginning. Since God knows the end from the beginning, He already prophesied that pandemics would break out in this age, didn't He? There are numerous churches around the world today, but do they keep the Passover? No. The truth for us to save the world is only in the World Mission Society Church of God. There is nothing other than the truth of the New Covenant Passover that Christ Ansang Hong proclaimed on the earth for mankind. Since we all know this, we should make this known to those who don't know.
They do not understand the power of the Passover. According to Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 8, God gives us His commands so that in the end, it may go well with us. From the viewpoint of God, the earth is nothing but a speck of dust floating in the universe. Did you see in the calendar the picture for February? How big do you think the earth is? Whether the earth exists or not does not affect the universe. Although it exists, it is not seen. Even if it disappears, it will not be seen. The earth is so small and insignificant. About 7.7 .7 billion people are living in this tiny world. Our God manages a great number of universes. The small earth is just a part of God's management of the whole universe. God put His great teachings in the Bible, and in order to bless us, all mankind, He established His laws and decrees. And He lets all people who are living according to the laws receive heavenly blessings which He gives from the universe. Despite that, people neither understand God's existence and His great divinity, nor fathom the power of His Word. Rather, they say, this is just a religious concept made by Christians. How can we receive blessings by just doing that? They are now living with such a false idea. Now is the time for all the children of Zion to awaken the world to the truth. We should say, this world we are living in is not everything. The earth we view from space looks so humble. However, since we only live in this world, this small world looks very great. But the earth, if viewed from the kingdom of God, is very small and trivial. It is nothing. The command of the Passover that God established with the people living in the global village might be broken by people, but never by God. While thinking about the will of God who grants us the Passover, let us take a look at Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Just as man is destined to die once, it is already destined. Some people leave the world a little early, and some others leave after enjoying a longer life. The difference is whether they leave today or a year later. All people once born are destined to die. This means that it is an essential course that everyone must go through. But God said that we must prepare for the world coming afterwards. Once born on the earth, all must leave here someday. God made us all exist on the earth for a limited period of time. Therefore, while we are on the earth, we must prepare for the future world to which we will go. In the process of living on the earth, we see some people suffering from disasters, some receiving blessings, some being rich, and some being poor. Various types of people are living in this small global village. But once born on the earth, all of them cannot help but face the moment of leaving this world, right? Today, let us think over this question. What kind of blessing does God give us through His command of the Passover? Through the Passover, God protects us from disasters. Furthermore, God opened the way for us to enter heaven through the Passover. Today, there are countless churches on the earth, but the serious problem is that they do not keep the Passover. In other words, the people living on the earth disregard God's blessings. 
So we must make this known to them and teach them. Shouldn't we teach them saying, God has given us this teaching. Recently, about 1,500 people were killed by the coronavirus in Wuhan, China. We don't know what's going to happen with that from now on. Because of that, we've seen a decrease in the world economy and Korean economy. Also, the countries connected to them are all affected by the slowdown. Taking this opportunity, we should preach the truth of the Passover to more people. Since God promised to bless us and save us from disasters through the Passover, we should all be protected by God and get help from Him. Let's confirm what God has promised us in Exodus chapter 12. Verse 10 reads, Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. In the Law of the Old Testament, for the Passover, people put the blood of the Lamb on the sides and tops of the door frames of their houses. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, the blood of the Passover Lamb, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. In Exodus chapter 12, God put the history that happened in the days of Moses about 3,500 years ago. What happened to all the houses that kept the Passover? The disaster passed over them. The firstborn of the Egyptian families that didn't keep the Passover all died. Then, what do these cases tell us and why are they recorded in the Bible? Egypt stands for this sinful world. God explains a global situation through a certain case that happened in Egypt, comparing the Israelites who kept the Passover and the Egyptians who didn't keep it. As for the households that kept the Passover, God let the destroying angels pass over the houses that had the blood. But the Egyptian people didn't keep it thinking. Just by putting the blood of the lamb on the sides and tops of the door frames, can we really escape the disaster? Because they also had their own God. They believed that their God would save them. This is how they disregarded God's command and disobeyed Him. Then, were there any Egyptian houses that overcame the disaster without keeping the Passover? There was not a single house. That was how Pharaoh was forced to release the Israelites from slavery. By the power of the Passover about 3,500 years ago. Some say, that only happened 3,500 years ago. Even though we keep the Passover today, there will be no protection or blessing from God. This is wrong. The covenant, which was made 3,500 years ago, still remains valid today. It makes all the disasters pass over. Through the power of the Passover, God will protect us from all the disasters happening in this global village which is represented as sinful Egypt. God had already shown it to all people through the incident that happened in Egypt. Let's take a look at Psalm chapter 91. Psalm chapter 91, verse 1. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. 
I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. God promised, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. And this promise was already given 3,500 years ago while keeping the Passover in Egypt. The Israelites all kept the Passover and entirely followed God's will being led by Moses. But the Egyptians completely ignored God's words. Whether people ignore or not, our mission in this age is to let them know God's words, isn't it? There are countless Christian churches around the world, but they don't keep the Passover which appears in the Bible. It is so sad. Jesus kept the Passover, Peter kept it, and the famous Apostle Paul kept it. All the members of the early church kept the Passover according to God's teaching. It is even recorded in church history. In the books of church history, such as Eusebius' Ecclesiastical History, it is recorded that all the members of the early church kept the Passover. However, today's many churches do not keep the Passover. Those who are to receive blessings must keep the Passover. In Psalm chapter 91, it is written, A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. These words contain the truth of the Passover. The Bible confirms that even when a thousand or ten thousand may fall at our sides or at our right or left hand, the disasters will never come near us who have kept the Passover. Let's see verse 8. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm, in other words, disasters, will befall you. No disaster will what? Come near your tent. Everybody, how thankful are we that we are in God's covenant? How fortunate it is we dwell in God's laws, regulations, and ordinances. Even after God gave us this covenant, most people of the world do not believe it. So Jesus already foretold that there would be only a few people who believe in God's covenant and follow it. So how does the Bible explain that road? The Bible explains that it is a narrow road and a small gate, doesn't it? Although it seems like the road that many people take is the right road, it doesn't work that way in the spiritual world. To which road has God led us? When Jesus, who sees the end from the beginning, foresaw how people on earth would be in the last age, there are far more people who do not obey the words of God than those who obey. It is heartbreaking. However, shouldn't we awaken the world and teach them until the last moment that God has set? We must teach and preach correctly to save our neighbors, families, relatives, and friends, saying, let us all receive God's blessing. By doing so, we must enter the kingdom of heaven altogether. In the book of Exodus, the Israelites put the blood on the tops and sides of the door frames of their houses, and God said that it would be a sign. God said, 
When the destroying angels see that sign, they will not strike the houses but pass over you. In the book of Ezekiel, the sign is called a mark, and in the book of Revelation, it is called a seal. Let us look at the scenes where the people who kept the Passover have such a sign and confirm that such a sign is put on our foreheads as a seal. Let's see Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 3. Now the glory of the God of Israel went up from above the cherubim where it had been and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called to the man clothed in linen, who had the writing kit at his side, and said to him, Go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put what? A mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. As I listened, he said to the others, Follow him through the city and kill, without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter old men, young men and maidens, women and children, but do not touch whom? Anyone who has the mark, begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were in front of the temple. This is a scene where the prophet Ezekiel sees a revelation and records that God will inflict disasters on all mankind. In the prophecy, it is said, do not touch anyone who has the mark. Doesn't it mean that the disaster will pass over anyone who has the mark on his forehead? God said to put the mark on the foreheads of those who keep something. In Ezekiel chapter 9, God commanded angels to prevent the disaster from reaching near those who have the mark on their foreheads. This is the same as when He commanded His angel to prevent the plague of killing every firstborn from touching the Israelites who kept the Passover in Egypt 3,500 years ago. This is not all. Let's look at Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any trees. Prophetically, the wind stands for war if you look at Jeremiah chapter 25 and Daniel chapter 7. Since the wind blows from all directions, north, south, east, and west, it means a world war. In Ezekiel chapter 9, God commanded to put a mark on people's foreheads before such a disaster happens. And here in Revelation, God commands a seal be put on people's foreheads so that they may escape from disasters. Let's see verse 2. Then I saw another angel coming up from where? From the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not do what? Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. To harm means to inflict disasters, right? God told the angels not to harm the land or the sea or the trees, but to postpone the disaster until the seal is put on the foreheads of God's children. God's actions written in Exodus chapter 12 Ezekiel chapter 9 and Revelation chapter 7 are all done in a disaster situation. Let's see Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. This star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it, like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke locusts came down upon the earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have what? Did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. What does God put on the foreheads of His people? God puts a mark on the foreheads of His people 
through angels. What is the mark? At the time of Moses, 3,500 years ago, as a sign, the blood of the Passover lamb was applied to the tops and sides of the doorframes of the houses that believed in God. However, in the last days, God let His people eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink the blood of the Son of Man so that they can have the seal. The Passover is absolutely the necessary truth in this age. So Jesus eagerly wanted to celebrate the Passover. Let's look at the scene in Luke chapter 22, verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Jesus commanded, Prepare to celebrate the Passover. Then Peter and John did as Jesus had commanded them. Verse 13. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared what? The Passover. Let's look at verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have what? Eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Jesus could simply have said, I desire to eat this Passover with you. But he emphasized, I eagerly desire to eat this Passover. Here we can understand how much Jesus wanted to eat the Passover with his disciples. Let's go to verse 19 and see how he ate the Passover. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, filled with the Passover wine, saying, This cup is what? The new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The new covenant Passover is a truth that Jesus established for all mankind. So we can see the scene of Jesus emphasizing repeatedly, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover, to celebrate the Passover with you. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. However, the Passover, the truth of life, was abolished. When did it disappear? In AD 325, in the 4th century, the Passover was abolished by the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Empire and the Roman Catholic Church conspired together to abolish the Passover, the truth of life. The fact that the Passover was abolished in AD 325 shows that it had been celebrated until AD 325, right? The birth of Jesus is a reference point for B.C. and A.D. Jesus stayed on this earth until the age of 33. And the Apostle John, the last of the twelve disciples, left this earth around A.D. 106. So until A.D. 100, there were people who received the teachings of Jesus and preached them correctly. Jesus celebrated the Passover, and Peter and John also celebrated it. In obedience to Jesus' command, they prepared the Passover as described in Luke chapter 22, right? They all observed the Passover, and the other disciples kept it until A.D. 325. This shows that the Passover was observed for over 300 years. After that, however, it was abolished by the Roman Catholic Church. Jesus desired so eagerly to celebrate the Passover, and He taught His disciples to celebrate it too, saying, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you, right? Let's look at John chapter 13. Not only the Passover, but everything else Jesus did was an example for us to follow. Chapter 13, verse 15. I have set you what? Set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. 
Jesus set us the example of celebrating the Passover. This shows that we should celebrate it too, right? The Bible describes a scene of the Apostle Paul emphasizing strongly that the Passover is a truth that must not be abolished. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from whom? From the Lord, what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, He took the cup, filled with the Passover wine, and gave thanks. This cup is what? The new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. What did Jesus mean by saying, whenever you drink it? Did he mean that it would be okay to do it only once? No, he meant that we should continue to do it. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Paul said that we should continue to keep the Passover and proclaim it until the Lord comes. Let's see why we should celebrate the Passover through 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Chapter 5, verse 7. Get rid of the old yeast, that you may be a new batch without yeast, as you really are. For who? For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. The Passover lamb stands for Christ. Just as the plague passed over the houses with the blood of the Passover lamb put on their doors in the time of Moses 3,500 years ago, so disasters pass over those who have the precious blood of Christ, the reality of the Passover lamb in this age. Jesus referred to the Passover wine as his blood. In the time of Moses, God let the plague pass over the people who put the blood on the sides and tops of the doorframes of their houses, and He has sealed and acknowledged us as the ones who will go to heaven through the Passover. We will not only escape physical disasters on this earth, but also go to the spiritual world. Everyone, this earth is nothing in God's sight. It's as small as a grain of sand on the seashore. However, God operates the entire vast universe. Do you think God asks us to keep the Passover because He needs something from us? Not at all. God has prepared the entire way for us to be blessed and to enjoy eternal life and happiness in the everlasting kingdom of heaven. Keeping this in mind, let us lead our family members, relatives, friends, neighbors, and colleagues to participate together in the Holy Supper of the Passover. Hoping you have received much grace, let me conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.